Well, in 1 Samuel 22, David flees from Gath and the Philistines. He escapes. What does he write? He writes Psalm 34. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. He has delivered me. What's the song of a heart that has just escaped great, great danger? It's gratitude to God. In 1 Samuel 22, as David moves into a cave at Adullam with an incredibly difficult group of men, he wrote more psalms than at any other time in his life. Now, I thought of this, you know, and I try not to be too funny, you know. And, uh, well, I don't know if I'm funny at all, but I try to not be, you know, too much levity. I remember my first Sunday at Quidnesset Church. The reigning elder came to me after my first sermon and said, you have too much levity. And uh, I've been working on it ever since. But um, <laughs> do you know what I thought about David's cave time? David moved in with a bunch of men that were very hard to live with. I think that these psalms would be great for ladies getting married to some of these men that are very hard to live with. There are more psalms that David wrote from the time of living with those hard-to-get-along-with men. Let me just list off what he wrote from that cave. David wrote from the cave of Adullam, Psalm 4, Psalm 13, Psalm 40, Psalm 57, Psalm 141, and Psalm 142. We're going to go through Psalm 142 in its entirety in, as a part of the series. And that, and uh, it's really wonderful. It's a caveman. You ever wonder if they're cavemen? Yes. We know one very well. David lived in a cave. And he lived with 400 coarse, vulgar, smelly, complaining, sharp, sword-tongued men who gave him a hard time. And what did he do? Did he have a breakdown? Did he, did he go off and quit? No. He wrote some of the most beautiful songs about God. And you know what he said? You know what the essence of David's struggle in that cave? If you could distill down his whole cave experience, it can be said in one little sentence. Through those most difficult times, he made great discoveries about God. You know, when I go to hospital beds, when I go to, to homes of people that are shut in, when I go to those who have been catastrophically set aside and they can't explain it and they just say, why is this happening to me? Did you know my heart is always drawn to these cave psalms? Because when God sets us aside, when he puts us out from our normal life, when he takes away our ability to do the normal life that we are so used to, do you know what he gives us the opportunity to do? To make great discoveries about him. And a heart that thirsts after God, thirsts and finds satisfaction even in the cave times in life. And David, as he was hiding in the cave, writes these psalms of satisfaction in Christ. In 1 Samuel 22, 5, that's where our psalm is from this morning. As David was hiding from Saul in the wilderness of Hareth, David takes time to write Psalm 63. Now, he had run from the cave. Saul had found his hideout, and Saul had brought his 3,000 men. So David scampers off deeper into the wilderness. And as he's out in that wilderness, instead of finding time to reinforce his position and get more military advantage, do you know what he takes time to do? To write the 63rd Psalm. And you know what he does? He looks out in the desert, and he looks at... at at what's around him in that wilderness, and he writes. Look back at Psalm 63. He says, you're my God. Early I'll seek you. I'm not going to sleep in and, and try and forget my troubles. I'm going to get up early, and I'm going to meet with you, God. I'm going to seek after you because my heart seeks for you, and i found the more I seek for you, the more I'm satisfied. Do you know that's one of the evidences of salvation? And evidence of salvation is the more pressure comes on our life and the more trials come and the more adversity hits us the more it squashes and squeezes us upward toward God so that we seek after him and the more that we seek after him the more he satisfies us are you satisfied Christians are to be satisfied Jesus said if you come to me you'll never thirst if you thirst after me I'll always supply you are you satisfied if you're not satisfied, you may not be a Christian. You ought to examine yourself whether you're in the faith. Are you seeking after God? When things squash you, when your marriage squashes you, when your job squashes you, when your, when your family or your, your social life, whatever it is, when it squashes you, does it squash you upward toward God or downward toward the flesh? Do you try and drown your dissatisfaction with more pleasure-seeking, more substance-seeking, more 
kind of hide yourself shopping or whatever gets you going? What is it that, that pressure in life? See, we're going to have pressure in our life. God says that, that life is hard, and, and it's just like a, a moment, and it's like a vapor, and it's very difficult. Man that is born of woman is, is short-lived and full of troubles. But what does it squash you toward? God and satisfaction or self and dissatisfaction? Psalm 63, Psalm 17, the song of a heart thirsting and being satisfied. <laughs>